Amen. So let's just pray before we go into the Word. Uh, Father, we thank you for this afternoon. And um, Lord, I pray that you would meet us here. That we wouldn't be leaving this place without an encounter with you. An encounter with your grace. And Father, help us to understand why we are celebrating this season, Lord. Why no, why all the hype? Lord, why all the gifts? Lord, I pray now we would that you would take us behind the scenes and uh, so that we could understand the reason for for this season, Lord. Father, we love you and we commit to you this time. In Jesus' name we pray. We give a clap to the Lord. Yon, um, tulad na lang kung ginagawa, ano, can I request everyone to, you know, sit up straight a bit? Um, I know it's a bit comfy here. No? We have a great place here. Pero huwag nyo tutulugan. <laughs> Ayun. So, um, no, last Sunday, no, I believe Pastor Philip was, uh, was the one who shared the word and he shared about reconciliation. Right? Tama ba? So, we started our new series last Sunday and yung title ng series is Power, Purpose, and Pursuit of Christmas. Now, can you say that with me? Power, Purpose, and Pursuit of Christmas. Right? So, um, that's what we're going to be talking about for the next um, five or six weeks, no? starting last Sunday. So, we want to know what's, what's, what's the power behind Christmas no? and what's the purpose behind it. And what's the pursuit of Christmas? So what does it look like? And I believe no, last Sunday, ano, uh, Pastor Philip talked about reconciliation. And that's one of the powers of the season. Right? So, um, so right now, no, we're going to be talking about the purpose of Christmas. Right? No, the purpose of Christmas. And, then, and um, just, just, just on the side, no, as I was preparing for, um, for the word uh, this week, no, just thinking about it, praying about it, um, reading some books about Christmas, uh, one of the words that was impressed on me is, um, is yung word na I think alam naman na natin, na lagi natin kinoconnect sa season na to, no? Advent. Uh, can you say that with me? Advent. Uh, familiar kay Don? Yeah, raise your hands if you're familiar. Ayan. So, well, no, growing up in a, in a um, no, supposedly no Christian country, and if you've uh, spent your childhood in a Catholic school, no, you'd be familiar no, with, uh, no, with Advent. So, meron pang Rithian. So, sometimes, no, naalala ko when, uh, when I was still younger, may mga contest pa yun eh, na we would be required to bring some of the candles. No, meron palang meaning yun. No, meron palang meaning yung mga kandila. And, and, and it's, it's a beautiful meaning no, dun sa, dun sa Advent wreath. No, pero, uh, let's go to the definition of Advent. Um, Advent, it's the arrival of a notable person thing or event. All right? It's an arrival. No advent. Okay? And then, you know, as I was thinking about this, one of the things na, na naisip ko is yung um, hindi ba ito yung theme ng mga sikat na movies? Right? Na there is an advent, no? Some some notable person arrived. Um, familiar kay sa movie na Matrix. All right? So, I guess yung mga medyo bata hindi masyado, no? Um, kailan ba lumabas yun? Echo. <laughs> 1999. So it was that, uh, grabe no, bilis ng panahon. So 1999. So basically yung, um, no, yung premise is that there was a problem and they were waiting for the one. Right? No, narinig niyo na ito kay Pastor Cardo. And, um, and even yung mga, yung mga ibang uh, popular movies like um, Harry Potter, ano pa ba? No, even yung Justice League, no, yung mga superhero movies that we that we are uh, watching right now no it's it's all about you know waiting for a person and that really fits kumbaga yung celebration natin eh no no tama ba no, in this season na uh, it's just fitting that we call it an advent eh, because we have been waiting you know for for someone that could save us and that of course is Jesus Christ no he came no in no in the form of a baby no and sabi nila no in a manger and then he saved us. 
No? And then we're, we're, no, we're going to dive in a little bit to that later. Um, and, and you know, um, talking about Advent, um, um, I think this season is really all about hope. Eh? Now, would you agree? Na one of the things that we love about this season is there's, there's a certain sense of um, hope, eh? right? I mean, this season, well, lalo na sa Philippines, we, we celebrate Christmas very early. <laughs> no, September pa lang. No, um, alam nyo na, no, September 1, no, meron, no, meron ka na maririnig ng mga songs, no, Christmas songs sa mga malls. Right? And that's the, kumbaga, that's the signal na, hey, it's, it's Christmas season. And nilalabas na yung mga meme no, nila um, ni Jose Marie Chan. Right? <laughs> so, yun, sobrang aga natin celebrate, And because, you know, there's, there's a certain hope to that. Eh? And, you know, what, what I want to achieve in this afternoon is, um, kanina sa prayer ko, no, I, you know, my hope is that we get behind. No, that we get past yung certain commercialization na ng Christmas. Kasi, you know, it's, it's a given. No? It's, um, it's all about gifts, even yung commercials. No? It's, it's bidding us to buy things no, for us. And yes, that's good. But more than that, no, I want us to dig a little deeper. What, what, what's, what's really the reason to celebrate? Okay. What's the hope that we have in this season? All right. Now, talking about hope, um, we are hardwired for hope. Now, I want you to take that in. We are hardwired for hope. No, we don't live by instinct. Okay? Every choice that you make, every response that you have to a situation or a relationship that you have, it's all fueled by hope. Um, let me read a quote no, from, um, I always use this quote, so baka nabasa niyo na to. So it's, uh, this is from Blaise Pascal. Sabi niya, all men seek happiness. This is without exception. Whatever different means they employ, they all tend to this end. The cause of some going to war and of others avoiding it is the same desire in both, attended with different views. The will never takes the least step but to this object. This is the motive of every action of every man, even of those who hang themselves. Yon. Do you guys understand that quote? So basically, Blaise Pascal was saying that every decision that you make is meant to make you happy. And then sabi pa niya sa dulo, even if it means killing yourself, you have a hope that that move will make you happy. So every decision that we make in life is fueled by a certain type of hope, whether that's good or bad. Right? We are a people of hope. No, our lives is a hope story. No, no, um, do you know that? That your life, um, your happiest moments, no, I believe it's a story of hope fulfilled. No, maybe some of you kaha graduate lang, no, you've been dreaming about graduating um, university so that you can help. So when you did, it's a hope fulfilled. Right? No, you got that um, dream job. No, na restore yung family. It's a hopeful field. Tama ba? In your saddest moments, I believe na it's a story of um, hopes dashed. It's, um, it's hopes disappointed. Okay. Now, frustrations are always brought about by unmet expectations. Now, anyone say amen to that? <laughs> now, do you have expectations na ang taas? Tapos, um, when you... When you get there, when you finally have that thing, it actually failed you. No? Where there is frustrations, there are expectations, hopes that were not fulfilled. You're always hoping. Okay? You're always attaching the hope of your heart to something. Now listen to me. Hope is always an object and an expectation. Now two things about hope. Now, it's an object and an expectation. You are attaching your hope to something, asking that something to make you happy. All right? So it's always twofold. You're, 
you're hoping for that object to make you happy. But here's the problem. We don't, we usually tend to attach our hope to things that will, that will not satisfy. Now, have you been there? Na you've, uh, you've really worked hard or maybe bought something, right? Um, you bought the latest uh, gadget. Now, we always use this illustration that you, uh, you bought the um, most advanced technology out there, phone. And then when you got it, after a few days, you don't really care anymore. <laughs> right? It, it hasn't really satisfied you. Okay. So we tend, no? Um, you know, sometimes we, we place our hopes on people. Right? No? Hoping that they will make us happy. Well, ako, no, just, just to be honest, no, just my cards on the table. Um, you know, lalo na before, and even now, if I'm not careful, I would put my hope on the approval of people. Just, just, just being honest. No? I, I, I do desire na maganda yung tingin sa akin ng mga tao that I am approved of. And every time I don't get the approval of people, I nosedive. <laughs> I, I, I become sad, I become depressed. Alright. You know, sino sa inyo na scene zone na kayo? Right? I mean, um, I guess there's a, uh, there's a little bit of hurt there. Pero, you know, you know, I know some people and even myself before na, alam mo yung, yun nga, nag-send ka na message, tapos nakita mo, nakita ni Lay. Na- nakita ni Lay and they're supposed to, you know, to reply. Okay, pero you know, na nagalit ka na, no, tatambong. Kasi, your worth is, is in a way tied to that eh. Right? No, of people responding well to you. No, am I right? Okay, so we put our hopes on things. Okay, but we have a tendency to misplace our hopes. And, you know, my hope, you know, this afternoon is, is that we're going to place our hope on what Jesus did. Okay, so we're going to dive into that later. Now, I want us to turn to the Bible. Um, if you have your Bibles, uh, you, can, you can turn with me to Isaiah chapter 59. So, so let me give you an outline of what we're going to do. Okay. We're going to talk about Christmas. And the first few verses that I'm going to show to you are not related to Christmas in, in kumbaga, you know, the way we understand it. But later, no, I'm going to tie it all around. So stay with me. Okay. So Isaiah 59, um, so this was written, the no background, no, this was written in a very, very dark moment in the history of Israel. All right, so this was written during the darkest moments of the nation. So this speaks a great deal about what we're going to talk about. Now let me ask you a question. When life is difficult for you, when you're dealing with the unexpected, no. When your story is not like what you want it to be, where do you put your hope on? Yeah, just real talk. Where do you put your hope on when you're in the darkest moments of your life? All right. Where do you run and hide? Where do you find your hope and security when things are not going well. All right. So, now, back to Isaiah 59. So, they just got back from exile. So, um, if you would remember, and if you know your Bible, um, there was a moment in the history of Israel that they were in exile. So, yung buong nation, they were, uh, they were brought uh, to Babylon. So, uh, for, for a long time, they were there. No, they, were, they were very far away from home. And then at this very moment, Isaiah 59, they just got back to their nation, not to Jerusalem. And what they, f- now what they found is a huge mess. Right? Now when they got back, they saw that there were no walls. Right? There was no leadership. There was no law. Right? It was a mess. There was no temple. Now you have to understand that during that time, temple worship is central. Okay, so during that time, walang temple. 
So this was a very dark time in the nation of Israel. Now, have you ever had those moments? Now, it, it was just very dark. Now, maybe even right now, now you're, now you're in the middle of that season of your life. Now, it's just very dark. You don't see the end of the tunnel. No, meron ka talagang pinagdadaanan. So they were there. No, the nation of Israel was there. Okay. And in the mess, there was a conversation on hope. So let me just um, show you the four progressions that we're gonna talk about no, in Isaiah 59. So, so four movements. Okay, napakita ko lang yung outline ng buong chapter. Okay. So Isaiah chapter 1, um, um, chapter 59, verse 1. So now this is a conversation between God and His people. So verse 1, um, the nation of Israel was accusing God of something. So parang they put God on trial. <laughs> Alright, now imagine that, no? And then in verse 2 to verse 8, there was a divine accusation. So God eventually accused His people. So He turned the tables around. No, sounds Christmassy? Hindi pa. Yan, later. <laughs> verse 9 to verse 15, now there was a confession. And then verse 16 to verse 20, we would know God's answer and His intervention. All right. And before we go to verse 1, now let me give you the four points about hope. Now I'm going to give this to you. No four points agad, no, rather than um, doing it um, incrementally. And then in the hopes na you're, na, na you're gonna find where it fits. No point number one about hope. The Christmas story is a story of hope. Right? Very obvious. No? It's, a, it's the story of hope created, hope lost, hope restored. Right? It's a story about hope. When you look at the Christmas story, it's a story of just hope, eh? of love, hope. Second point. Now you still there? Yeah. All right. The doorway to true hope is hopelessness. Yeah, does that make sense? All right. Now I see some question marks. No, later. We're, we're going to answer that. Now the doorway to true hope is hopelessness. Now the only way you'll ever find true hope is to give up on all those places where you tend to put your hope that can't deliver. All right. Okay, third point. For hope to be reliable and trustworthy, it must fix what's broken. Right? If your hope doesn't have the power to fix you, why would you put your hope in it? Right? If, if your hope will not fix you, if, if it will not um, kumbaga, deal with the deepest issues of your heart, why would you put your hope in it? And point number four, now listen to this. Hope is a person. His name is Jesus. Hope is a person. His name is Jesus. So hope is not a location. It's not, it's not an amount in your bank account. It's not a new relationship. All right? It's Jesus. It's a person. It's Jesus. Now let's, now let's go back to Isaiah 59. Now, sabi mo sa katabi mo, gumising ka. Right? Now stand up straight. Uh, sorry, sit up straight. <laughs> you might actually do it. So, <laughs> Okay. So let's, um, uh, let's go to verse 1. Um, sabi dito ng Lord, Behold, the Lord is not sh um, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save or his ear dull that it cannot hear. So God was responding to an accusation. So his people was accusing him, Lord, nasaan ka? Why weren't you saving us? Lord, where were you when this is happening to us? Where were you when we are in the midst of pain? And then God answered, My arm is not too short to save, nor my ear is too dull to hear. I can hear you. Alright? 
So God was answering an accusation, a charge against people, no, again, uh, from his people. And when life isn't working the way you, um, na you envision it to be, tama ba na, it's so tempting that you're gonna ask the same question. Right? Sino sa'yo yung nakaka-relate na you went through a certain season and now you're doubting God's love for you. Now you're doubting if, if God is still there. No? Lord, natutulog ka ba? Okay. We sometimes find ourselves in the same boat. Tama ba? Now, sabi ni Paul Tripp, no, which is, no, this is actually Paul Tripp material. Now, when you allow your heart to begin to question God's wisdom, His goodness, His presence, His faithfulness, you don't run to Him for help. Because you don't run to someone whom you're doubting. Right? So we quit running to Him. But God says, No! My arm is not too short to save. I'm not the problem. The Lord is saying in verse 1, I'm not the problem. I can save. My arm is not short. I can hear. I am God. Now, how many of you know that God can do anything? Right? He is God. Okay? So he's establishing that, no, I'm not the problem. Okay? Um, in fact, no, in Amos chapter 4, no, there's, there's, there's a book in the Bible, no, Amos. No, um, you don't need to go there. But God was, um, was talking to his people also. Na sinasabi niya, hey, I sent you famine. I sent you problems so that you would return to me. You know, hey, no, hindi, hindi ko kayo binigyan ng pagkain. No? I sent you storms so that you would return to me. And is it possible that the storms that you're going through, yung dark moments, it's meant to bring you back? You know, but God you know, said that, um, um, sabi in Amos 4 na, but you did not return to me. Okay. Now, now we go to the second act, no? the divine accusation. No, in... So this was God diagnosing the problem. So in verse 2, no, so God starts answering no, His people. So sabi niya, but your iniquities have made a separation. right? But your iniquities have made a separation between you and me, between you and your God, and your sins have hidden His face from you, so that He does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongues, your tongue mutters wickedness. Now listen, what's, now listen to me. Now this is what's happening here. Now tama ba na, it's, it's the default position. It's our default position. Not to think that the problem is outside of us. Right? That the problem are other people rather than inside of us. Now, so God is telling here, no, hey, you are the problem. Your sins, your iniquities, yung mga issue mo sa buhay, yun yung problema. Right? Now, God is telling us, no, God is diagnosing the problem with man. That the problem is not something outside of you, it's something inside of you. It's your sin. Now, sounds Christmas hindi pa, no? All right. Between you and God. I mean, I think about yung mga protests, right? No, maraming protests recently, di ba? So, um, di naman lahat ng protests masama. Pero, I mean, I've never, I've never come, ac um, come across a participant in a protest that has a banner na nakapoint sa kanya, I am the problem. Right? I've, I've, I've never come across a protestor na ganon. It's it's always someone else, right? No, that that's a venue to, no, to, um, to point fingers rather than point at me and say, hey, no, I I'm, I'm I am part of the problem. We point our fingers to the other party because that's easier, right? And this was exactly what the nation of Israel was doing. No, Lord, ikaw yung problema. Eh. But God is telling, you're the problem. You are the problem. I mean, think about, okay, no, another example. Um, ever, been a, um, ever been in a bad relationship? Now, I'm not just talking about romantic relationship, pero pwede na rin. 
Um, no, maybe barkadahan, classmates, uh, maybe um, a mentor mo sa, sa work, right? Or, or boyfriend, girlfriend, or mag-asawa. Is there really such a thing as a bad relationship? No, like the concept of a relationship, it's bad for you. But at the bottom of a bad relationship, sino nandun? Tao. Right? You know, sabi ni Paul Tripp, there's no such thing as a bad marriage. Only people that are doing bad things in a marriage. Right? There's no such thing as a bad government institution. As if the government institution can do something bad to you. We have an institution with people in it doing bad things. All right? So the problem is us. No, the problem is inside of us. It's a heart that's in sin. Okay. Um, I, I came across a, um, um, a story. No? There's, there's a mayor sa Philadelphia in the 1980s. Pangalan niya Frank Riccio. So he's an Italian. And uh, medyo ano siya, Para siyang Duterte, ganun yung, ganun yung personality niya, no? very, uh, very frank, very straight, gets the job done. And then uh, there was a press conference, and then one of the reporters asked him a well-meaning question. No? Um, tinanong siya, so uh, Mayor, what do you plan to do with street crime? What do you plan to do with street crime? Mga valid, no? And then um, sinagot siya ni, ni, ni Mayor, Streets don't commit crime. Streets don't commit crime. It's people at the bottom of it. Um, uh, there's this guy, pangalan niya G.K. Chesterton. So in the, um, I think in the 1890s, no, he's the mentor of uh, C.S. Lewis. Um, in the 1890s, so that's a, that was a long time ago. So there was a newspaper, The Times. And, and then the newspaper, no, they asked, What's the problem with the world today? And then sumagot si G.K. Chesterton. No, it's, um, is it there? No, sabi ni G.K. Chesterton, Dear sir, I am. What's the problem with the world? I am. Right? So, so God was saying here that you can't find hope by finding a new location, a new situation, an institution, a new institution, even finding a new church. Why? Because at the bottom of it, again, who is there? Us. Right? And in the, in the, in the verse that we just read, no, um, um, God mentioned three things. So first one is iniquity. So these are um, in a way theological terms. So iniquity. So binyang iniquity. So that simply means moral uncleanness. No, we are morally unclean. And then the second, which is uh, very interesting, no, transgression. So binyang transgression. It just means it's an act that go against a law or a rule or a code of conduct, code of conduct, an offense. You know. Um, um, recently, um, sino dito marunong mag-drive? <laughs> Quite a few. Um, ako, no, med- uh, medyo late ako natuto mag-drive. So, recently lang. So, this year, actually. And then, the other day, no, I was driving with my brothers. So, uh, medyo okay naman, ha, pero medyo kinakabahan din. No, from, uh, from time to time. So, um, as I was driving in the evening, so medyo naguluhan ako dun sa directions na binigay ng kapatid ko. So sabi niya, hindi, ano, dyan ka na, dyan ka na bigla, ano, kakaliwa. So, dyan na, dyan na mismo. Hindi ako nakapag, uh, bagan nakabuelo. So kumaliwa ako, then nakita ko yung signal light, yung, yung traffic light, it's already red. Sabi ko, it, it, no, ituloy ko na nga. <laughs> Kasi may iwan ako sa gitna kapag, which is a far more, uh, no, worse offense. So, uh, pagkakaliwa ko, no, I, I really felt, hindi ko lang alam sa inyo, no, ako na guilty talaga ako eh. 
I, I felt that I transgressed a law. <laughs> right? I mean, no one really saw, but hinabul ako ng sarili ko. Right? So transgression, no? it's, it's an act that goes against a law. And sin, right? It's falling short of the mark. You know, what God is saying here is that the thing that most needs to be fixed is inside of us, not outside of us. As we would often sometimes say, our biggest problem is inside. And you'll never get to real hope until you listen to what God is saying. Right? Nasabi ko kanina na the door to hope is hopelessness. No. Until you realize na, Lord, I am the problem. And I need help. I need your help. You're never gonna find your real, true hope. And then it becomes interesting. Now in verse 9, so, um, so after God is res- um, responding to an accusation, uh, sabi niya that my arm is not too short to save, nor my ears too dull to hear. And then secondly, he, he brought out accusations against the people. No, sabi niya, hey, no, you are the problem. And, and then the people followed by a confession. No, in verse 9, sabi nila, sabi ng mga tao, therefore justice is far from us and righteousness does not overtake us. We hope for light. No, listen to this. We hope for light and behold darkness. Right? Uh, no, can you imagine that? We, we hope for light, no, something else happened. And for brightness, but we walk in gloom. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope like those who have no eyes. We stumble at noon as in the twilight among those in full vigor. We are like dead men. We all growl like bears. We moan and moan like doves. We hope for justice, but there is none for salvation, but it is far from us. This is a description of a people that's utterly lost. No, ano yung sabi dun sa verse na binasa natin? That they were groping. No, sino sa inyo na naranasan nyo na na magka-brownout sa bahay nyo? Or hindi pa? Never? I mean, uh, mga 90s kids, no? Kami... <laughs> Uh, it's a, uh, well, nangyayari yan, di ba? No, uh, no brown out. And you would, no, you would think na memorize mo yung bahay nyo, di ba? Right? No, memorize mo yung bahay, no? You, you know the corners, the walls. But what happens is that, di ba, pag nagka-brown out, makangapa ka eh. Nakakapain mo yung gamit, yung furniture, yung wall, so that hindi ka madada pa. And that's the picture of Israel during that time, that they were in such a dark place, that they were groping. You know, they were just feeling things out. Wala silang direksyon. Alright? They have completely lost their way. And listen to me, no? if you're in that place, in that situation, that's a significant moment of decision. Now, because in that place, in that dark place, you have two options. It's either you turn your finger and blame other people or you turn your finger to yourself and confess. All right. And confess. In verse 12, no, it takes on a different um a different uh, different tone. So, um so nag-iba, no. Sabi ng nation of Israel, for our transgression are multiplied before you. Now you see the, not the change in the pronoun. For our, no, instead of blaming, they were starting to own up. For, for my transgression, for our transgression, it's not anymore blaming God, it's me. For our transgressions are multiplied before you and our sins testify against us. And for our transgressions are with us and we know our iniquities transgressing and denying the Lord and turning back from following our God. 
you know, we can't run away from our issues. If we are the problem, we can never run away. No, we never, no, we never magagalit ka sa, sa mga kasama mo sa family, no, to your spouse, right? No, whenever you do something bad, you can't run away from you. Right? Have you ever, you know, if you, if you run a race, running from yourself, sino makikita mo sa finish line? Ikaw. Because you can't run away from yourself. Right? So the nation of Israel was saying, God, I am the problem. I am the problem. I am hopeless. Help me. Help me. Help me. This is the doorway of real hope. No, tapikin mo yung katabi mo. Tabi mo, gising. Really wake up. Wake up. No question. Have you given up on all your hopes? Okay, let me give you a fill-in-the-blank statement. If only I had this, fill-in-the-blanks, I would be this. No, come on, no no fill-in-the-blanks for yourself. If only I had this, I would be happy. If only I had this, I would be complete. Jerry Maguire, <laughs> you complete me. <laughs> Not really. You know, sabi ni Blaise Pascal, there's a God-shaped hole in everyone. Whatever you put in there, if it's not God, there you will never be fulfilled. There's no other thing in all creation that can, that can give you hope the way God does. So we need to abandon our shallow hopes. Now let's, let's see God's response. So what's God's gonna do? This we turn a little bit no, to Christmas. See, I wanted to paint a picture. Eh? Why is the good news good? Because it invades bad spaces. A good news is only good if you know the bad news. Why can we celebrate Christmas? Because we understand that there is something to celebrate. That there is something much more deeper than gifts. Right? So in verse 15b, sabi ng Lord, the Lord saw it. The Lord saw the mess. And it displeased him. That there was no justice. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no one to intercede. Right? So God saw the mess. No, God saw his people in the dark and it displeased him. No, sabi niya, what's happening? All right. It 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 displeased him that no one's doing anything. And then sabi niya, then his own arm brought him salvation and his righteousness upheld him now let me just call on the 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 worship team to help me what's the response of God sabi niya then his own arm brought him salvation and his righteousness upheld him now so the response of of God in light of the lostness in light of the mess in light of the confusion in light of the sin, the iniquity, the transgression, God's response is to send His hope. So you need to understand that when you see the phrase, the arm of the Lord, doesn't talk about a physical arm. It talks about Jesus. So in Isaiah 59, He laid down, we are the problem. And your problem is not outside of you, it's inside of you. And you can't run away from you. Who can save you? 
Now you see the picture, it's so grimy. No one can save us. But then God saw. No, God saw. Sabi niya, let me do something about this. Let me send my son. The arm of the Lord, it's Jesus. He sent him to save us. And his righteousness upheld him. No, sabi ng Lord, I'm not sending a situation. I'm not sending money. I'm not sending a new relationship to you. I'm sending a person. He is hope. He is Jesus. You know, I've always asked this question. What's the greatest problem of man? Sin. What's our greatest need? Forgiveness. In Jesus, we find forgiveness. God is invading. Like you see the picture, it was so dark. In God, amidst the darkness, invades our world with hope. He, on that day that Jesus was born, it was a war. God was sending His Son as our only hope. Our only hope. Um, and hope brings with it two things. Okay, first thing, justice. Okay. Sabi sa verse 17, He puts on righteousness as a breastplate and, he, and a helmet of salvation on His head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped Himself in zeal as a cloak according to, the, to their deeds. So will he repay wrath, wrath, not to his adversaries, repayment to his enemies, to the coastlands. He will render repayment. So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. For he will come like a rushing stream, which the wind of the Lord drives. So what God is saying here that comes hope is justice. That I will bring justice. You know, God hates sin. God hates sin, and His promise is He's gonna snuff out sin. Right? That He's gonna deal with sin. And this should, in a way, no, um, make you feel two emotions. Number one, terror. And second, comfort. Now, let me deal with comfort. Bakit comfort? Na sino sa inyo gusto nyo ng hari? na walang pakialam sa justice. Now you can just be raped anytime. Pwede ka nakawan anytime. Pwede ka bugbugin anytime. Without justice. Right? So, we need, you know, there's a certain sense of comfort that our God is a God of justice. But terror because God will snuff out sin. But the problem is this, if sin is, is inside of us, if God snuffs out sin, who's gonna be dead? Us. So in hope, there's one part, there's, ju no, there's justice. Second, there's grace. There's grace. In verse 20, sabi dito, and a redeemer will come to Zion. So those in, um, to those in Jacob who turn from transgression, declares the Lord. A redeemer, I will send my son to redeem you. Nung ganda ng word, no redeem. Sabi niyo, redeem. It means to buy back. To take what's mine. To buy back. Okay. God sent his son. Now listen to me. God sent his son in the form of a baby. On a manger far, far away. Jesus grew up, lived a perfect life. Jesus lived a perfect life, a perfect sinless life. He lived the life that we cannot live. He lived the life that we cannot live. Died for our sins. Right? Died for, no, died for our sins on the cross. And His righteousness was imputed to us, given to us. 
Now let me give you a um, an illustration so that you can understand. Um, look at me. Um, you see this? Yes or no? This is a tissue. Right? It's very dirty. I'm not sure san mo san san mo pinahit to. Uh, sabi ko dumian mo eh. <laughs> but this is us. This is our sin. This is our iniquity. This is our transgression. This is our this is our immorality, our issues in life. We are an utter mess. But this is Jesus. <sighs> Let's just say this is Jesus. He died on the cross for us. Died for our sins. So that when God looks at us, He doesn't see us. He sees the righteousness of Christ in us. So in our mess, this is what Jesus did for us coming here. Saving us. So that we can stand before God in righteousness. A righteousness that's not us. Because by ourselves, we're not righteous. So Jesus came, lived a perfect life, imputed to us a righteousness that we don't have. Again, so that when God sees us, He sees the perfect life of Jesus. You know, kanina, um, I was at Destiny South. One of the worship songs na kinanta, I don't even know no, praise or worship. Um, you know, I, I don't usually ano, cry during during praise and worship. Yung mga, yung mga iniiyakan ko lang, strength of my life, no, bilang lang yan, bilang lang yan. Pero yung kinanta yung kanina, last song, Oh, come let us adore Him. I mean, it's, it's a standard default song, right? And I was just at the side, I, I was just crying. Oh, come, let us adore Him. The one who gave His life for me. And this is Christmas. You know what? You know, that's the reason why the shepherds, <laughs> they, they were in awe, they were in worship. Mary, Joseph, because they finally had hope. They, that finally, you know, you guys know you have your own story. Right? Now you have your own story. Now remember the first time you had that feeling of real hope. Now maybe some of you are swimming in your sin, drowning. Some of you can't stop watching pornography. Now some of you, masisira na yung family, there's adultery. Some of you, there's just lying and lying. There's just no hope. Some of you were depressed. And then you heard the gospel. And you were just crying, crying, crying. Because finally, right? This is the story, right? Finally, there was hope that I can find forgiveness. Right? This is what we have this season. Now, in John chapter 1, verse 14 and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory glory as the only son from the father full of grace full of truth see it's truth but it's full of grace we're under grace now pagbalik ng lord judgment right now we're under grace now, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. Now, so God is not just interested in making you happy. God is interested in saving you from sin. 
Now, that's why God is gonna allow certain things in your life, difficult trials, so that you will be saved from certain things in your life na hindi ka masisave kung di mo pagdadaanan yun. Na amen? And just to land this, no, in Isaiah chapter 9, an obviously Christmas passage. You know the title of this passage? For to us, a child is born. Verse 1. And listen to me. But there was no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. Now listen to me. The two lands mentioned there, or the three, Zebulun and Naphtali, or Naphtali, those two places are not random places na minention lang ng Lord. Um, Zebulun and Naphtali, it's at the northern part of the promised land. It's at the very north. So when, um, when Jerusalem had, um, had invaders or mga enemies, you know the first place that the, that the enemies will go through is the north. Now, they will go through Naphtali and Zebulun. And in the process, they're gonna destroy that place. They're gonna rape the women. They're gonna kill the people there. They're gonna burn the houses. And this happened for centuries. This place is not a happy place. So when God mentions that these two places, that the people who walk in darkness have seen a wonderful light, he is describing a place of darkness. Now let me ask you, do you have places in your life like that? It's just darkness. And there's no hope anymore. Nasabi ng Lord dito, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. Now verse 6. For to us, a child is born. Not to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. You know, ang ganda ng huling statement nun, the zeal of the Lord will do this. That I will do it, sabi ng Lord. That because we have no capacity. We have no capacity to do it. Jesus coming here is God's great initiative to love us. It's God's great initiative to love us and save us. So sabi niya, I will do it. Now, it's not because of what we do, it's because of who He is. That's grace. It is His initiative. And, you know, sabi dun, Galilee of the Nations. Right? And when Jesus would start His ministry, He would mainly do it in Galilee. That Galilee will be the showcase of God's grace. Now, in Matthew 15, verse 31. Now, I want you to imagine this. Imagine ano yung itsura nung scene, no? So that the crowd wondered when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled healthy, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. That's hope. 
lastly, no, I forgot to mention this kanina. Pero, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. You know, Paul was saying, Jesus came to save sinners and I am the worst. If you're here, he's saying, no, you're saying that there's no hope for you. Yes, there is. Jesus came. With Jesus, there is forgiveness. Jesus covers our shame. Therefore, we have hope. Therefore, we have hope. We have hope. And that God has not left us to ourselves. God remembered this covenant and saves us, continues to save us. pray together. Father, we, we thank you. Lord, it was a pain. It, it, it was difficult to, not to draw up our condition that we are the problem, we are, our hearts are the problem. But Father, right now, give us the grace to understand. Because the door to true hope is hopelessness. When we give up on the things that we're holding, there we find our real hope. Now, just just, just for a moment, no, in your seats, Um, I want you to just, you know, between you and God, just, just, just ask this question. Where are you putting your hope on? Where is your hope on? Is it on Him? Or on people? money or on a promotion or on reputation approval where do you find your deep significance you did for us. And Father, I pray that we will have a deep, deep, deep revelation, Lord, of what you did for us coming here. That while we were yet sinners, you died for us. You came here and you decided that you're gonna save us. Lord, I pray that we're never gonna lose sight of that, Lord. Father, amidst the busyness of the season, Lord, I pray that this will make our hearts sing. That this will make our hearts sing, Lord, in joy, in praise, in worship, in adoration, Lord. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray that we will have hope, Lord. Lord, for people that are here, That maybe, Lord, indeed, they are in a very dark place. They are depressed. They are lost. They are going through a difficult time in their work, in their relationships, in their family, in their marriage. Lord, I pray na there will be hope, Lord. Father, we, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. 
thank you, Lord, because we have hope. Lord, thank you for coming and saving us, giving meaning to our lives. Lord, we just trust in you and we surrender everything to you, Lord. Father, you're amazing, you're good, you're worthy. You are worthy of all our honor and all our praise and all our adoration. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray.